number of events that they are trying to implement, some of which are in conflict with our interests and may harm us, and we should be aware of them. 1. Jews must be brought to Palestine from all over the world. It is clear that Palestine is for Muslims. 2. If the state of Israel is formed in the area from the Nile River to the Euphrates River, Iraq is theirs too. 3. Jews who immigrate to Israel will be saved. The rest of the Jews will be killed. That means 7 to 8 million Jews who are in Israel will survive and the rest will be dead. 4. The Jews must destroy the two mosques, Al-Aqsa and the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. And instead of these two holy mosques of Muslims, they need to build the Temple of Solomon. They have already dug under the whole area. Right now, a series is being aired about this issue, which I prefer not to name, and is about this subject. They are digging under Al-Aqsa and looking for the Ark of the Covenant. In the last article I read, architects and engineers say that Al-Aqsa can be destroyed by a two-magnitude earthquake since they have dug so many holes under it that there is no foundation left. These holes were deliberately made under the foundations and columns so that it could be destroyed with an easy shake. Right now, some of the stairs and courtyards have sunk and fallen. It is not unlikely that they stir some Takfiri groups into the West Bank. I believe that this was one of their plans, to use these Takfiri terrorists to attack the West Bank and to kill Palestinians. This action is possible by the Zionists. Just like ISIS, a clown like al-Baghdadi issues a fatwa and terrorists pour into the city. Then they kill many Palestinians. And since the Eastern Quds is on this side, they would attack and destroy Al-Aqsa Mosque under the pretext of shirk or something else. It means that the Takfiris would destroy it for them. Then the Zionists, on the pretext that we want to rebuild it, instead of Al-Aqsa Mosque, they build their third temple. When it was said that the West Bank must be armed, they got scared. The day when the Jews destroy the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Rock Mosque in Jerusalem, the final war of Armageddon begins under the leadership of U.S. and England. In this world war, the whole world will be destroyed. Why America and England? Because there are evangelicals in these two countries. They believe on the day the Armageddon begins, Christians following the fulfillment of Christ's wishes, that born-again Christians will see Christ and they will be caught up from the world to heaven, rapture. From there, beside Jesus, they will watch the destruction of the earth and the severe punishment in this war. Then, at the middle of the Battle of Armageddon, when the Antichrist is gaining victory, Christ will appear in the world with born-again Christians and defeat the Antichrist at the end of this holy war. And he will establish his world rule in Jerusalem and the temple that was built by Christians and Jews before the start of the Armageddon in Jerusalem will be the place of Christ's global rule. That is, they believe that if all the Jews go to Israel, but the Al-Aqsa Mosque remains in its place, the Messiah will not appear. Palestine is not an ordinary land. Palestine is the hidden secret of the reappearance. Aqsa Mosque must remain. They must fear us. They have created so much conflict between Shia and Sunni. Think about how many holy places of Muslims are being destroyed. Have you noticed this? Museums are destroyed. The minds of the people of the world are fully prepared for the destruction of Jerusalem. The Israeli government has an urge to destroy Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem with the help of America and England. And the temple should be built by them in this place. And this mission is their responsibility. Before the Armageddon, the horror should take over the American and European societies. This horror can be economic. In evangelical beliefs, Peace in the world is not an option before the coming of Christ, and Christians should prepare for Armageddon and the destruction of the world in order to accelerate the coming of Christ. They say, don't do anything to make the world a better place. Therefore, in this way of thinking, anyone who takes a step for peace is against the coming of Christ, and they must be removed. For example, Yitzhak Rabin, who is not a good person, and I do not approve of him. As soon as he talked about peace, they killed him. His assassination case is still open. Yigal Amir assassinated him, but still no one knows what happened behind the scene. 
Now about the Armageddon. The American evangelicals are more Catholic than the Pope in comparison with the Israeli Zionists. Have you ever wondered why Americans are so pro-Israel? Do you know why Trump won the election? According to all the polls, Trump had less votes. Hillary Clinton was meant to be elected. They even made movies related to it. Everything was ready. But something happened. Trump had a meeting with Sheldon Adelson. Sheldon Adelson was a Zionist Jew, the father of American gambling. From Las Vegas to the Philippines, he ran the gambling industry with a disgusting face. Trump met him. He said to Trump, I will support you, but under one condition. What does it mean when he supports Trump? It means that Jewish centers support him, their media propaganda for him. Under one condition, do something that none of the American presidents have dared to do, that is, move the American embassy to Jerusalem so that the preparations for turning Jerusalem into the capital of the Zionist regime will be prepared slowly and finally, the construction of the third temple, which requires the destruction of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. No U.S. president has done this, and Trump, the madman, did this. Madman, but smart. You should be aware of people like Sheldon Adelson. The only way to defeat them is resistance. Palestine has had two intifada, which means uprising, before the first intifada, which was known as the sticks and stones. Intifada. The people of the world did not know that there is a country called Palestine. They did not accept Palestine as a nation at all. In the first intifada, when the Palestinian people rose up with stones and sticks, the world witnessed their large number. The media had boycotted the issue to such an extent that the public opinion of the world considered the existence of something called the Palestinian nation as an illusion, but the first intifada changed everything. In the second intifada, known as Al-Aqsa Intifada, the Palestinian state was recognized. The recognition of the Palestinian state was something unimaginable. The third step is the end of the occupation of the Zionist regime and the formation of an army for the Palestinian state to defend itself. The result of the third intifada will be the creation of deterrence power and the intifada must be formed from the West Bank. The center of the intifada is there. Al-Aqsa is there. Israel is so scared after the discussion about arming the West Bank. In their analysis, it can be read that they consider this action equal to the destruction of the Zionist regime. Until today, they have controlled the West Bank using Mahmoud Abbas and the Fatah movement. I must say that the West Bank is not like the Gaza Strip. One third of Palestine's water flows in the West Bank. The holy site of Al-Quds is there. The main goal of the Zionists in occupying the Holy Lands was to destroy Al-Aqsa and build Solomon's Temple. So West Bank is not like Gaza. It has more complexities, longer borders, and they have bigger plans there.